Hello, welcome to Southampton and the National Oceanography Centre. It's great to see you all here. Whether you're attending in person or you're joining us remotely, we are ready and we're excited to get started. I haven't had the opportunity to meet you all yet. My name is Martin Solon, your programme lead for marine biology and marine biology with oceanography. So I just wanted to take a few moments of your time to introduce you to your course, highlight a few changes and modifications along the way, and show you some exciting developments that will help you get the most of your programme. It's true to say, the current situation we now find ourselves in has thrown up a few challenges, but my colleagues and I have been working diligently to make sure we can deliver your programme in a COVID secure way. Naturally, you're going to have lots of questions, and I'm going to try and answer some of the more pertinent ones today. The good news is, is though, courses will be delivered. I thought you'd like that, guys. Yeah, um, that's enough. Thank you. Our usual mode of teaching will continue in smaller groups, but will be supplemented by software. Hi there. Welcome to Microsoft Teams, a collaboration app that helps your team stay organized and have conversations all in one place. Could have said it better myself, whoever you are. Using new software from Microsoft and from Blackboard, we'll be able to collaborate like we always have done. There's a whole array of new tools that we can use, from whiteboards to breakout rooms. We'll get all the benefits of being in a classroom, albeit virtual. I bet you could even high five. Blackboard Collaborate with the Older Experience is a real-time video virtual whiteboard to interact. Let's take a quick tour. You will find the session menu on the left, the Collaborate panel on the right, and audio and video controls at the bottom. First, let's take a look at the session menu. Here, you will find the information to call in on your phone, resources to learn more about using Collaborate, and the option to leave the session. Next, let's take a look at the Collaborate panel. Open the My Settings panel to add your profile picture, complete your audio and video setup, and adjust your notification settings. You can control session settings by allowing or revoking attendee permissions. On the chat panel, you can chat with everyone in the session, or you can send a private message to another attendee. Additionally, moderators have a dedicated private channel. Next, access the Attendees panel to see who has joined the session. You can detach the Attendees panel to keep it visible at all times. And finally, on the Share Content panel, moderators and presenters can share a whiteboard, application or screen, and share files. Additionally, moderators can conduct a poll or start breakout groups. When you share content, it will appear in the media space. And finally, at the bottom of the screen, you can set your status, share feedback, toggle your audio and video, and raise your hand. And that's it. You're ready to jump in and start collaborating. In Ocean Earth Science, we've embraced this technology and we've extended it further. Here's what some of my colleagues have been doing over the summer to bring you new content and deliver an exciting program. We're setting ourselves up from home so we can enable an interactive environment. We're using the best of our facilities and the samples that are available to us. We've been out into the field, we've collected specimens to bring those to you so you can continue as we would have done in a normal year.
but marine biology and oceanography is a truly global discipline. So we got our thinking caps on and we brought you content so that you can gain those experiences even in this difficult year. Here's just a few of them. Of course, marine biology and oceanography requires a great deal of practical skills. Many of you I know will have concerns about whether field courses are taking place. At this point in time, they will be, but they'll be happening in smaller groups and at different times when it's safe to do so. We've supplemented that experience and we've created a virtual world so that you can experience the field centre before you go, during your time there and afterwards. Wow, it's certainly been an action-packed summer and there's plenty to be going on with for the rest of the year. I realise, of course, that it can be rather overwhelming. But let's get started and I'm going to take you through some of the salient things that you need to know over the coming days. The first thing is, keep calm and don't panic. It's easy to say, but there's no need to take notes now. All this information is available to you in a variety of resources. Information is readily available online about coronavirus, about the timetable and your courses, the university. Plenty of help is available on all aspects of university life. The first point of call is the student hub. This is where most of the information will be. Whether you're a new student to Southampton or whether you're a returnee, it's worth going through this information because many things have changed since last year. There's information about your support and well-being, academic support, where to get resources like the library and computer support, perhaps um, particularly important this, in this year. Go through the Welcome to the Academic Year location, and I also want to draw your attention to the COVID information. This is where you'll get the most up-to-date information at all times. And I just want to point you to the Ocean and Earth Sciences section as well for anything specific to your courses. 
under the welcome year, there's a whole load of information about orientation, about how to uh, engagement, student support, all the things that we expect of you. So it's worth having a thorough look through these pages and do return to them um, from time to time because the information is live and it is being updated. The university also has a separate section of the website which gives you all the information about COVID and it's got current student information, particularly if you have particular circumstances, whether you have caring duties, whether you're from another country, and all of those kind of information to do with visas and everything else is located within these pages. So the hub, that's your first point of call. Do also get to know your teaching staff. Look at them, they're a happy bunch. Just like you could in an ordinary year, you can arrange meetings with them, either in person, socially distanced, or online, using the software we introduced to you earlier. As program lead for marine biology, I work closely with the program lead for oceanography, currently Bob Marsh, although he's exiting that role and Phil Goodwin is taking over shortly. And together we take an overview of the curriculum as a whole and oversee any kind of assessment or examinations and review or approve any course changes or transfers, which you will have discussed with your tutor. The senior tutor is Simon Boxall, and the deputy head of school of education is Chris Horton. On a week-to-week -week basis, you'll also get to know your personal tutor and your shadow tutor, who are really your kind of first point of call, and they will escalate any issues that you may have or any concerns that you have to the relevant people. The good news is, is, despite all the changes that this year has brought upon us, the course structure kind of really remains integral. You're still getting eight modules a year, but we've had to make some modifications to the mode of delivery and also the sequence of events throughout the academic year. Lectures, laboratories and practicals will all continue, but in a slightly different form to, the, to what you're used to. The formal tutorial program is delivered via the library, um, we have some boat practicals and we expect those to take place and we have some small group sessions which will either take place online or again in a socially distant space. Non-residential and residential field work is going ahead but we're going to delay some of that till later in the semester or even into the second semester and we're also modifying the deliver delivery to make sure that that is COVID secure. If you're in third and fourth year, opportunities for placements, either local or abroad, with industry, with the private sector, or other research institutes are still possible. We just need to risk assess them and take a few extra precautions than we would in an ordinary year. One thing you can expect this year is that things will be different to what you're used to. No matter how short the notice, we will be compliant with the latest guidelines and information that comes to the university, even if it is at the 11th hour. But we are committed to achieving all that we can to ensure that you achieve all of the learning objectives within the programme. The need to be flexible causes some complications for the timetable, as you will imagine. So this year we're implementing a dynamic timetable, which you can access in a normal way through timetable.sotton.ac.uk. It's not going to be a timetable that's set in the way that you've been used to in previous years. The schedules will change and they may change at very short notice. To help you orientate your way around the timetable and what the current status of a particular event may be, the university has implemented some colour coded entries. So it'll indicate by colour whether the event is live, whether it's self guided and you would perform that um, activity online whether it's a physical lecture or a laboratory, and whether that laboratory is either a computer or in a practical lab. And then there's another category for anything else that's not captured in those different types of activity. We will be offering blended teaching. That means there's going to be a mixture of live events like mini lectures or discussions or demonstrations, which will be given online, which you can come and attend. Some of you will be in standard lectures and practicals depending on the class size and how we divide you up in order to achieve that. There'll be self-guided online sessions and they're going to be in your timetable and they'll be itemized and listed out of hours. That doesn't mean you need to do them out of hours, it's just to move them out of the timetable so we can keep that space free for when we do need to be flexible. Face-to-face -face teaching will take place 
where it's safe and where it's necessary to do so. For example, where we want to achieve learning objectives that cannot be achieved by any of the other means available to us. If you have problems accessing your timetable, email service line at sutton.ac.uk or go to the service line now portal online and register your problem. So the take home messages here are to check your timetable regularly, expect change and engage. So this is what your timetable is going to look like. This is an example from last year. But don't forget your colour coding behind each of your boxes, which will tell you whether it's a live event or a event that's happening online or in any other location. And don't be surprised that if there's information there that tells you that actually the event is going to be held outside or in a different venue than you were expecting. Your course organisers will communicate with you through the usual portals on Blackboard and let you know of any changes subject to um, the timetable. If you press the information button, you may get some extra information there and it'll give you advice or any other information that you need uh, to attend that lesson. I wanted to spend a few moments on course structure. Uh, as I said earlier, the structure of the programme has remained largely intact. There's just been the need to swap a few things around. So let's just step through them uh, year by year. And the information has been updated on the university web pages there at the top of the screen. Um, and there's an addendum being published where some of the latest changes uh, will be described. However, course organised may modify that content, the mode of delivery, the timings or the locations, and of course timetabling might change when these events may take place. So do keep alert about all of those changes, but your course organiser is probably the uh, best source of information uh, together with your timetable. If you're in first year, whether you're doing the BSc or the MSc Marine Biology or the Marine Biology and Oceanography programme, basically there's no changes to worry about other than the course content and mode of delivery will have changed slightly. But all courses are going ahead and you can expect um, to achieve all of those by the end of the semester and indeed by the end of the year. The same is true if you're in your second year. So again, all the courses we expect to be, able to be able to deliver. The major change here is that um, some courses, for example, marine benthic ecology will be entirely remote. Other courses will have uh, different elements to them that you will do in class, in person, or through other means. Um, and the major change for the second year is that the field courses uh, will be changing dates. So currently, um, so is 2030, the Coastal Ecology Field course is anticipated to take place um, in March. For Year 3, it's a little more complicated. There's been a number of changes within Year 3. So the Fisheries course, so is 3017, and also the Shelf Seas course, so is 3009, have both moved into Semester 1 to accommodate um, some of the changes that we've needed to make to the programme. And Plymouth, so is 2018, is going to be spread across the whole year, so it won't be necessarily in one large cohort. So there's a number of changes there to year three, but again, we're able to deliver um, all of the courses um, as stipulated. And finally, for year four, whether you're doing marine biology or marine biology with oceanography, uh, kind of the main news for you is that some of the courses that were usually delivered in a short fat format will now be delivered over the course of the year in an extended format. I know given the changes that are occurring in the landscape, many of you have got some questions about your transfer options. Well, they're going to stay the same as they would in any ordinary year. So for example, if you're registered as a BSc Oceanography student, and you're in your first year, you have up until the end of your second year in order to transfer to, for example, the Masters in Oceanography programme. I've outlined all the different rules between all the different programmes here in this diagram, and hopefully that's self-explanatory to you. But if you've got any queries about transfers or any other aspects of your course, then of course do get in touch with me directly and we can take it from there. I also wanted to ease your mind about expectations. Don't forget you're in one of the best places for your scientific interests. We're the only marine biology degree in a Russell Group University that's run out of a marine institute that is exclusively based on marine modules. So some tips for the top. 
Make good use of your tutors, the staff and all the facilities here to support you and to help you achieve your goals. We expect that you'll attend lectures and practicals and tutorials and if you can't do that in person, we expect you to engage with all the online material that we've been developing over the summer and more. The more you put in, the more you'll get back. It's your degree, not our degree. We're here to help you nurture your goals and see you go from strength to strength. Be realistic when contacting us. It's a particularly busy time this year. Our policy is that we'll reply to you within three working days. Your personal tutor, though, is your first point of contact. And that point, that tutor, will escalate any issues that you have, whether they're personal, of an academic nature, or any other nature, as appropriate. Believe you me, there is nothing that you bring to us that we haven't heard in some shape or form before. So do get in touch and speak to us early if you've got concerns of any kind. You've worked hard to get here, and we expect this drive to work to the best of your ability to help you achieve and to learn and to grow. We expect you to present your work on time as you train to work in the profession. We also expect you to engage with the process. And I can guarantee you that if you do that, you will do well. Just a quick reminder about some housekeeping. Always carry your ID card with you, particularly around NOC if you are coming to the building. And don't tailgate through the airport gates, as we call them, as you enter the building. It sets the alarms off. Health and safety, pay close attention to. There's a number of things that you sign as you would in an ordinary year, but this year, of course, there'll be some extra things that you need to be aware of. So please do take note of those. One thing that we expect is academic integrity, especially when you're working remotely. Details of assessment methods and deadlines for work will all be given to you, and extensions to deadlines um, are generally only granted when we have special considerations. So do read our special considerations policy. Details on how, to feed, how feedback will be given to you and on your academic performance will be given to you by your um, course tutors. If there's anything else that you need, don't forget that Enabling Services is just an email away. We're not operating the phone lines at the moment, but if you do need advice or support, you can email them on a 24-7 email, enable at sotten.ac.uk. And if you're facing a significant difficulty or dealing with a crisis, do, do get in touch at first support at sotten.ac.uk. Finally, I just wanted to say that your experience with us matters. It really does matter to us. So please, we want your opinions. We need your feedback to help us continually improve our courses. There's a number of opportunities throughout the year. There's the student evaluation forms. There's the annual review. And there's national reviews, for example, the National Student Survey. Please do get involved. If you like, become a student representative. If you're interested in that, uh, email representation at susu.org. We do listen to your advice and you can come to us at any time. In the last year or two, we've simplified the course structure. We've explored new destinations for field courses and, and field excursions. And we've added new modules and experiences. All this has come from you. We've added in more hands-on experience and training and more marine biology. And we've extended online submission and feedback and some of uh, the features that you'll have seen earlier in this video. So please do send us your feedback. We want to hear from you. Well, that's all we have time for for today. And I hope that's clarified a few points for you. If there's anything else, do get in touch. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy your time in Southampton and you enjoy your programme.